Hi booktube, uh, first apology for the clacking that you hear. I have the fan on, air conditioner's off, fan's on. Um, I'm here today with uh, day 30 of hashtag rem books, which is review every day in May. Um, and today I'll be reviewing Life is a Dream uh, by Pedro Calderón de la Barca. My copy was translated by John Clifford. And uh, as you can tell, I've read it so many times that uh, the cover's fallen off and it's being held together with an elastic. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to set this down and try and superimpose a proper cover there. Um, yeah, Life is a Dream. It's about uh, this king who is an astrology king. He really likes astrology. He comes up with this prophecy that his son is going to be a very cruel and malicious leader. Um, so instead of, you know, trying to change fate, he decides to lock his son up in a tower. Um, and as he ages, he kind of becomes, begins to regret this decision. And he decides to, um, drug his son, take him to the castle and pretend that he is the next heir and to see what happens and then kind of make decisions from there. The prophecy comes true. The, the... Sigismundo, the heir, is very, you know, irate and, and angry and is throwing people at windows and all this stuff goes on. So he drugs him again, puts him back in the tower and has people tell him it was all just a dream. Um, and then uh, it happens again, uh, except this time people come and because now they've realized that there's this heir and, you know, divine right of kings and let's avoid a war deciding who's going to inherit the throne and they take him out and he has a second chance at becoming the rightful heir. Um, that's the basic plot of Life is a Dream. Um, there's three things I want to talk about in regards to this play, um, comedy, philosophy, and women characters. Um, so this play is written during the Spanish Golden Age, 17th century, 1635-1636 is where they pit it at, um, and it is hilarious. I suggest that you get uh, the John Clifford um, edition. Um, you do lose a bit um, in regards to, like, it's not um, in rhyming cu couplets like some of them are, um, but it, I think it's a more true to the, uh, uh, like, almost more direct translation, um, and you get a lot of those <laughs> comedic elements are quite obvious, and the language that he uses is very modern as well. I really like this, um, edition. Um, so this play is, it deals with a lot of philosophical elements that you think it would, but it's also very, very funny, um, and that's why it's one of my all-time favorite plays. So it, our opening scene, our characters falling onto the stage, that's the, that's the direction, I'll read it out for you here. Um, a noise off stage, Rosara falls onto the stage, she's dressed as a man. Um, and it's because their horse thought it was a bird and tried to fly, and that's why they fell off. <laughs> really quite absurd um, thing, and they see this tower, and you know Sigismund is in the in in the tower, um, but also the the lady Rosera is very much into philosophy, and she's always talking about you know this philosopher said this and this philosopher said that, and she has this uh, character with her named Claren, who's like the comedic relief, and he actually says to her, I'm gonna read here, lady, your philosopher is an idiot, and I wish and I wish he was here so I could kick his head in, only then I'd have to hear him complain about my utterly amazing skills in kicking. <laughs> it's like absurd. Like in a 17th century play to hear something like that happen, I'm gonna kick the philosopher's head in. Except I want to don't want to hear him complain about it, um, which is <laughs> which is cool. Um, and the play is really self-aware. It's really self-referential. A lot of the characters, not just Claren, who's the comedic relief, um, break the fourth wall, and they're always talking about. You know, characters are realizing that they're just foils for the play. That they're just you know plot devices. Um, um, one character says, servants are supposed to talk in plays, and I haven't said a word. <laughs> it's just like, stuff like that. And, um, at one point, another character has gone off stage, and he wants to come back in, and he's on the stage, and he says, getting in here isn't cheap, is it? This man standing at the door wanted to see my ticket. So I thought that was quite funny, too. Um, 
and another thing that's quite funny is that, as I said before, Sigismundo, this prince who's gone, who's gone power crazy and mad, um, thinks that he can do whatever he wants, and uh, if someone doesn't agree with him, he throws them out the window. Um, so it's lots of, I'm going to use the fun word here, defenestration. I love that word. Um, and he says, you know, what, what are you doing? And he said, someone made me angry, so I chucked him out the window. It's like, duh, that's what kings do. You don't agree with me? Out you go. Yeah. Uh, but juxtaposed with that is a lot of like serious questions being asked, um, you know, questions that are, are relevant and, and philosophical ideas or things that kind of make you think, um, you know, like what is life, what um, do our actions matter in life, uh, do we have to deal with consequences, what consequences in the overarching picture do our actions have. Are we really living in a dream only to awaken in the real world later on? Um, those kinds of, of questions that are still relevant today that we can still think about today. Um, and then of course because it's 17th century Spain, they're beginning to question the divine right of kings. Calderon himself is, uh, from quick research, seems to be pro-kings and pro rightful heirs and stuff like that. Um, that. He also asked though, what kind of power should a king have and where should that power come from? Should it come from the people or should it come from being born to the right parents? You know? Um, so you, you have this lots of juxtaposition of these really funny things happening compared with like these really serious thought provoking things. The last thing I want to talk about is how awesome the female characters are in this. Um, Pedro Calderon by all, all that I've read seems to be a really conservative person. He was, you know, pro um, divine right. He eventually became a priest, um, and you know, all this kind of stuff. During the Spanish Inquisition, he became a priest. Um, but he seems to be like quite the feminist too, in, in in his characters and what they say. So, Rosara's story is like the subplot, and she's seeking revenge for a wrong done to her. Um, which is on itself cool, but there's lots of things that they actually say. Rosara and Estrella are the two female characters. There's not a large cast, so it's not like they're underrepresented. There's like six characters maybe at most. So they don't stand for flirting. It's funny because all the men are like, oh, you're so beautiful and all this, I'll do all this for you. And oh, like all the stars and all this, you know, romance cheesy stuff. And they're just like, listen, stop flirting with me. One woman says, look, I know you're in love with someone else. You're only flirting with me because I'm the, uh, the, the you know, the next person in line if this whole prince thing doesn't work out. Um, so stop flirting with me. I'm not going to stand for it. Um, and um, another one, uh, she asks the man a question and he responds by flirting with her. And she's like, seriously, again? <laughs> and I'll read the direct quote here. Oh, for God's sake, what's that supposed to be about? After all I've gone through and I still got to cope with such incomprehensible replies. It's, it's hilarious. Um, um, so like there's those, those funny things too that are just like I'm sick of, of men thinking that I don't have an opinion here. Um, can you please listen to me and, and answer, to, answer me properly? Um, and then it even goes so as far to have um, one man threatening to rape a woman and she goes, hold up you can't force my consent and that's what she says and that's just like relevant <laughs> relevant isn't it um so i think that's really cool that's like the reasons this is my favorite play because the comedy the philosophy the 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 history and the strong female characters so give this a read let me know if you've read it if you've seen it performed that would be awesome i haven't had a chance to see this performed and thank you for watching